Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa has given the strongest indication yet that it is going for gas. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the Department of Energy's plans in this regard. Hi Terence. Hi Samal. Is it fair to say that gas currently plays only a modest role in South Africa's energy mix? That's right. In South Africa we're really a coal heavy country both on a, from an electricity perspective as, as well as in the, our liquid fuels mix. We produce some of our liquid fuels using uh, coal to liquids through Sassel. And then um, the rest comes in the form of crude that gets refined at the coast or imported as final product more and more, in fact, imported as final product. And then there is some gas that uh, is used by Sassel uh, at its uh, Secunda plants and in the Free State to produce fuel and chemicals. And then we have obviously mass gas, which uh, uh, is producing liquid fuels as well as uh, have aspirations to do chemicals using gas, although that gas has dwindled and the project to extend the life of that uh, gas resource for moss gas has come to almost naught and I think there's major stress and uh, lack of visibility as to what's going to be the gas supply for moss gas. Even the so-called open cycle gas turbines uh, in the Western Cape, both at, uh, at uh, Ankerlich and Korikwa, are really diesel plants. So in the total electricity and energy mix in South Africa, gas is still a very, very small portion. And what does come in is either from Mozambique through the pipeline to Sassel um, or through the offshore fields in the Southern Cape into moss gas, which has dwindled. What vision is emerging around increasing the role of gas? The, the, the whole uh, plan at the moment is to try and look at both the regional gas resources which we know are significant, uh, both on the east and the west coast, but particularly on the east. There have been massive fines of gas uh, in Mozambique. We're already importing from southern Mozambique through the Romco pipeline. But in the northern Mozambique and into Tanzania, there's been really big discoveries of gas. And there are plans by American and um, Italian or European companies to, to bring that gas into account sometime in the future and probably uh, produce liquefied natural gas for export into Asia, particularly China. Those plans, uh, we have to see how they actualize in the next few years. Obviously, with what's happened to fuel, uh, oil prices and gas prices in, in the world, uh, those projects are um, you know, not as attractive as they were. But there's a massive potential around Mozambique. We know there's gas in Namibia. We suspect there's still gas around South Africa's coastline, and there's obviously this uh, potential for um, shale gas in South Africa's Karoo. But uh, the initial vision is really to start um, introducing gas into the energy mix of South Africa through importation. And that would be uh, through a liquefied natural gas uh, importation facilities. And uh, to, to using that to set up a gas in, uh, infrastructure and industry in South Africa, and eventually to try and domesticate that gas, so it will be imported, dollar-based, um, and to domesticate it through probably the shale gas or the coal bed methane gas as resources, or anything else that we found off our own coast, or to regionalise in the form of gas that could come through from Namibia and Mozambique in the longer term. So that's the long-term vision to kickstart this industry on imported gas, but eventually to evolve and transition to a domestic gas uh, industry. That's quite important because if you fully dollarize uh, your electricity industry, as we in, in many ways we have with the, the fuel industry, it's, it means you need to change prices and you have to depoliticize de that price setting mechanism quite quickly. And we can't have uh, public hearings like we do at the moment around electricity prices if we have a very dollar heavy uh, electricity mix. We're some way off that. But um, you know, unless we can domesticate the gas industry, there is that long-term dollarization risk. How is the DOE going about implementing that vision? Well, as you said in your intro, we're starting to look like practically that we're going to go for gas now. And there's, there's already some uh, initial indications that we're looking at RPP, uh, gas to power pr program, of around of over 3,120 megawatts and then a further 600 megawatts that would be a, a hybrid of RPPs and utilities. So what, about 3,726, um, I think, megawatts in total that we're already looking at for a gas-to-power program. So the gas-to-power program will be 
at the vanguard of starting this gas industry beyond what we do at Sassel already and what we do at Moss Gas now. So looking at um, the, the, the plan is to ha send, uh, have a request for proposals probably before the end of this calendar year, but maybe into early uh, next year, uh, where we look at a, a floating storage regasification facility at one of three ports, or, or maybe a combination, uh, Richards Bay, Saldana Bay, or Kucha. Um, and that, that those investigations are currently underway as to where it should be sited. Um, then there's the, uh, th so there would be a, that, that regasification and storage facility that needs to be some sort of jetty, some sort of infrastructure to bring the gas on shore that it can be used in both a gas to power program and if there's enough gas to also be used uh, directly by industry, say if, say if it was in Saldana in the west coast. So there's, uh, there's a lot of excitement about that. I think there's still a long way to go. We still need to see what the pricing is going to look, uh, look like. But there, it looks like we're going to go into a serious phase. I think we're going to have some market testing during the course of the year. Already uh, we've seen an expression of interest has been issued uh, uh, earlier this month for a 600 megawatt gas to power plant, which would be a hybrid RPP state-owned enterprise or state-owned company development. And uh, that expression of interest, they're looking, testing the market currently. They want those responses by the 20th of June. Uh, into the RPP office, which sits in uh, Centurion, and they will then assess where they go from there in terms of a proper formal request for proposal, tender process, uh, or invitation for bids. So we're still at the early stages, but I think we're definitely at a far more mature stage than we were than we have been for quite some time. This, this has been spoken about as important. It's flagged in the national development plan as important to try and introduce gas as a major, a more a bigger component into the mix. One, to de-risk our electricity system from its over-reliance on coal, but also to help as a transition um, away from our coal heavy and climate uh, deleterious uh, uh, mix into one that is, is uh, it's, a, it's a seen as a cleaner fuel with, uh, when compared to coal. It also has many advantages of being able to operate both as in the form of a sort of a mid-merit and responding to uh, responding to uh, the way the load and demand is is uh, is happening in the country in real time, so you can ramp up gas plants quite quickly, uh, relative to other plants like nuclear or base load plants like nuclear and coal. So it's got when you when you're building a lot more renewables into your system, and which which are generally intermittent, and you need to respond quite quickly to the say a, a fall off uh, because there's cloud cover in the Northern Cape gas is a, a good solution for ramping up very quickly. So there's a lot of excitement about it. I think there are still risks. I think the big issue is where the gas is, how are we going to get it in, and what those prices are going to look like. At the moment, everything looks very favorable and the tailwind, there's definitely strong tailwinds for importation of gas. But as we can see, and as we know, the world changes very fast. And you can have a uh, oil price one day that's trading over $100 a barrel. And then it can, uh, a few, few months later, it can be trading at half that. And we've seen the it's now in a recovery phase uh, to about those, uh, half those levels. So there's a risk of having a big portion of your ga gas coming in the form of imports. But as I said earlier, the, the, the vision is to try and transition to a domestic gas industry. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.